Hello, hello, everybody out there. I am Joe, a.k.a. Phantom Meeple, as always, on another edition of One-Off Wednesdays. Uh, it was, uh, was kind of nice having uh, Monday off, not streaming. I did miss doing it, but uh, it was nice to just kind of kick back and relax a little bit. Uh, yeah, it was nice. Can't, can't complain. But uh, glad to be back with all of you. Hello to everybody out there in chat that uh, has decided to join me this evening for uh, my first of hopefully many theme streams. Um, some people know that know me personally know that I absolutely love game shows. I am a huge fan of them. I've been watching them since I was a kid. Um, I remember being like homesick or uh, having like half days from school or, or just like random school holidays and in the mornings in like the 80s and even into the early 90s uh game shows dominated television uh it was it was a big part of just about every channel's morning lineup uh even even some of like um even some of the other stations that did like uh, children's programming in the morning like cartoons they would have like y you know kid based game shows and, uh, you know, Nickelodeon was big for him, too, although that was cable. But either way, doesn't matter what kind, I am totally in love with game shows. And today's stream is going to be dedicated to uh, many of the games that were created uh, based on game shows. Uh, primarily going to stick to Nintendo uh, Super Nintendo, and maybe one or two on Genesis, but um, it's not going to be any later than that. It's going to be strictly stuff I played as a kid, so fair warning, a lot of the trivia, the questions are extremely dated, but uh, still good for, you know, learning stuff, even though some of them are, like, completely wrong, and if there is something that's changed for, you know, 2021, and I happen to know it, I will definitely explain it, but uh, these are games of their time period, so definitely keep that in mind. Uh, I am going to start off with an absolute classic, and of course to honor the late, great Alex Trebek. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, Jeopardy on NES. Um, I... I played the Junior Edition of this game quite a bit. Um, once I was old enough, like, you know, 12, 13 years old, I got, uh, uh, quote unquote, the adult version of Jeopardy, which, you know, had harder questions. And, uh, Nintendo also had like a 25th anniversary version of Jeopardy with even, you know, newer questions than that. Uh, there was a fourth version on NES, uh, called Super Jeopardy, which was based on a short 12 week stint that, uh, Oh, we got the kitty behind me. Hello, kitty. You gonna go away now that you've been acknowledged, or you gonna stay there? Oh, he's gonna stay there today. Cool. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, yeah, Super Jeopardy. So it was based on a 12-week stint that uh, uh, was on ABC during the summer of 1990. It was a 12-week tournament where they had uh, four lecterns, and it was basically just a, a tournament of elimination, and eventually there was one winner. And uh, they made a video game based off of that. And I think it even had, like, vocals of Alex Trebek, too. But it's a, it was a horrible, horrible um, interpretation of what Jeopardy was. It, it, it was just based on this, you know, random tournament that they did. So uh, I'm not going to be playing that. But uh, I will be playing the uh, regular version of Jeopardy on NES to start with. And uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to hit probably about maybe eight to ten games today uh, i may not finish them all in their entirety because some of them are completely bad but i will definitely share some history that i know about them fond memories that i may have and uh, if anybody else recognizes anything that i play feel free to you know uh speak up in chat and uh definitely share some uh, stories if you too also you know watch game shows or, or have any fond memories of uh anything that i might play or or uh, you haven't played, but have certainly watched. So let's go ahead and switch over, and uh, let's see how terrible I do. <laughs> All right. Let's play Jeopardy. 
<laughs> now entering the studio is, well, me. <laughs> All right, I think we're going to go middle of the road difficulty versus the computer. Because I don't want to get completely creamed, but we'll see what happens. I will say the default characters they have in these games for contestants, I don't know who was paid to draw them, but they are just horrendous. <laughs> like, seriously, look at how tacky some of these characters are. Like, and, 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 it, and, it, and it differentiates between, you know, male and female characters. Some of them you can't even tell, so maybe it was ahead of its time. But uh, yeah, all the characters are just pretty much the same drawings with, like, alternating color palettes. It's just <laughs> super, super bad <laughs> as far as characters go. Like, I, I never I never picked one that I ever liked. Uh, let's see. Abby says, I like the ogre lady. Which is the ogre lady? <laughs> is, it, is, it, is, it this, is it this one? Hold on. Uh, yeah. Is it the, let, me, let me know if it's this lady. If not, I can I can definitely go through. <laughs> hey, we don't know games. Thank you, thank you for re-upping that subscription for three months. So so kind of you. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, let me see. No, the green skinned one. Okay, let me see if I can find the green skinned lady. Is that the <laughs> is that the one? I mean, I mean, she's definitely got green skin and gigantic glasses. <laughs> uh. Okay, so so that that's the one, <laughs> Ogre Edna. Okay, we'll go with Ogre Edna. <laughs> uh, anyway, we don't know games. How are you doing this evening? Thank you for uh, joining my uh, game show stream. Uh, just about to get started with uh, the first round of Jeopardy, and let's see what categories we've got. We've got Chemistry, we've got Hold Your Horses, Bodies of Water, Brother and Sister, Eat Your Veggies, and Double Trouble. All of which, <laughs> I have no idea where I would even start or what, <laughs> what these questions are even going to be about. Uh, I'm doing all right. Glad to hear it. Uh... You know, let's go. Let's go start with brother and sister, and we'll go four hundred. Let's see. Oh, that's an easy one. Dear Abby's sister is also an advice columnist. That's that's an easy one. That's Ann Landers. And here I am dating myself, knowing most of this like useless knowledge. <laughs> and I don't mind if chat plays along. Uh, if, you, if you happen to know something, I definitely don't mind a little backseating. And you know what? I should probably change from just chatting. So let me change to Jeopardy. There we go. All right. I think we'll stick with this category. Let's go for five hundo. All right. Phil and Don, they try to wake up little Susie. Ooh, I have no clue. It's probably a music question, and I'm terrible at music questions. Yep, sure enough, it was the Everly Brothers. <laughs> yep, I knew the song, didn't know it was the Everly Brothers. Hey, Kev Meeple, welcome in. And Lander's a blast from the past, absolutely. Uh, let's see, this inert trace element in our atmosphere is the name of the planet of Superman's birth. Oh, I did know that, but I... <laughs> Too busy reading the question. Maybe I won't read the question because the computer's going to buzz in on me. <laughs> so I'll read it after the fact. Hmm. So that one, let's see. So with earth, wind, and fire, the fourth of the elements, which the Greeks believe made up everything on earth, that should be water. There we go. Oh, go away, pop-up alert. <laughs> Alright, let's go back to brother and sister, see if we can do better on that category. Ooh, I have no idea with this one.
Oh, the Carpenters. Okay. Yeah, so you'll, you'll come to notice as we go through this stream, if it's a music question, I'm probably not going to get it. <laughs> oh, and of course, the computer gets a daily double, because we all know the computer cheats. <laughs> wow, doesn't even bother to answer the question, just completely fudges it. <laughs> did that guy shake his fist in anger? Maybe, yeah, maybe he did. Alright, so let's see. So looking at these, the best way to judge a horse's age, that is a horse's teeth. <laughs> yeah, definitely a slap in the face. Like, how are you going to get a daily double and then completely fudge the question? Alright, let's go with eat your veggies for five hundo. Ooh, the finest piece of... Ooh, I... I wonder, I wonder if that's uh, Garbanzo's, and I think it is, just based on the incorrect answer that uh, <laughs> the, the uh, computer just did right there. Yeah, I actually learned that one later in life, that uh, chickpeas are also called Garbanzo beans. <laughs> yeah, daily double, put in gibberish, because <laughs> that's definitely the way to go. Okay. Ooh. I don't think that's potatoes. Oh, I guess it was small potatoes. Huh. That's, prob that's probably a saying that uh, predates me being born. <laughs> Ooh, cough drop makers. Oh, man. Oh, the Smith Brothers, that's right. Smith Brothers do make cough drops. You know what? As, as soon as it scrolled on, I could see, like, the black and white package, like, hanging in a drugstore. <laughs> Completely forgot that one. All right, so there's an easy question. Two baseball games played by the, by the same two teams in one day. <laughs> Unintentional Frasier reference. <laughs> They're playing a doubleheader. What's that? They play two games. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure Abby is laughing at that and shaking her head in shame. Hey, Jess, welcome in. Appreciate you lurking. Uh, grab dinner, watch. I, I appreciate that you're here. Hope you enjoy. All right, let's see. In grammar school books, his brother and sister own Spot and Puff. Ooh, don't know that one. Oh, Dick and Jane, that's right. You know, I think I read Dick and Jane, like a super old copy of it in first grade, and just completely forgot what the story was about. <laughs> uh, thanks for hanging on my stream earlier. Hey, no worries, Jess. You do entertaining stuff. I, I like what you do. You teach games amazingly. And speaking of which, I am going to shout you out real quick because that you are just an awesome person, and you deserve it. So let me do that real quick. There we go. <laughs> if my keyboard decides to work. There we go. <laughs> well, I'm glad the computer got that one wrong, because I actually know that question. <laughs> All right, fast military march. That would be double time. I should know that, otherwise I would be shamed being a former Marine. <laughs> hey, no worries, Jess. Like I said, I appreciate you, and you are awesome people. All right, let's stick with double trouble here. Let's see, lowest of the orchestra wind instruments, also indicated by the prefix contra. I think that's a double bassoon. I know Abby's going to double-check me on that, because she was in band, I think. Yeah, got that one right. There we go. Hey, Smooey Smoo, welcome in. Good to see you. Hope you are wonderful this evening. All right, let's go ahead and finish out Double Trouble. Let's see, two images on a photo shot at different times with both visible. That's... That's a double exposure. 
All right, maybe I should have started with the double trouble category. Apparently, I did very well in it. I will say, though, you got really good uh, tapping the, uh, the D-pad real quick and putting in an answer considering they have you on time. <laughs> so I guess this game did do that much. Let's, uh, let's finish out Eat Veggies. Why not? Uh, Douglas Smith Arker and Mammy Yoko's Pipe of Choice. I have no idea. Oh, Corn Cob Pipe. Okay. That one confuzzled me. <laughs> Alright, so they're going to hold your horses. One of these is equal to the energy... Oh, that's an easy one. That's an easy one. One of these is equal to the energy of raising 33,000 pounds one foot high in one minute. That should be a horsepower. There we go. I would love to be on actual Jeopardy. I've taken the test a bunch of times, but uh, I don't know. I guess I've just never scored well enough to actually move up in the audition process. But one of these days, one of these days, I'm going to legitimately study for the Jeopardy test. <laughs> but I'd probably have to put so much time to stuttering. It's, uh, studying is not even funny. Ooh, I don't. I didn't know that one. Let's see. The slang session of incredulity is the title of the Marx Brothers. Show. Oh, horse feathers. Yeah, old comedy. <laughs> I know of the Marx Brothers. I don't know many of their movies. Like the only one I knew off the top of my head is like Duck Soup. Okay, let's see. So this large river, that should be the Rio Grande, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, ye old comedy for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Marx Brothers stuff is actually not bad. Uh, let's see, this Russian shoot made from beet. Oh, that's a good one. Now I just hope I spell it right. It should be... It's borscht. But now I'm trying to remember how to spell it. I'm probably spelling it wrong. Oh, I spelled it right. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's... Let's go to... Let's finish out Hold Your Horses. Let's see. Shakespearean monarch who offered his kingdom for a horse. That wasn't... I don't know if that was King Lear or not. No, it's not King Lear. Just based on the gibberish the uh, computer put in, but I'm not going to guess it. <laughs> I'll save my 500 bucks. <laughs> Let's see. Smooth Smooth says King Richard. Yeah, Richard the Third. There you go. Uh, let's see. Let's go into chemistry. Why not? Alright, given the lowest temperature theoretically possible, that should be absolute zero. Which I think to this day, nobody has actually accomplished to do. Alright, let's stick with chemistry. You seem to be doing well there. Uh, let's see. It is the central core of the atom. That should be a nucleus. There we go. Alright, and finishing out chemistry. Let's see. Combining Simon's philosophy and is the main source of chemical knowledge to the 1500s. I'm pretty sure that is alchemy. Even though it's not an exact science. But uh, I'm, su I'm surprised they consider it that chemistry. Alright, bodies of water left. So we'll go from high to low. Uh, the world's third longest river. Its Chinese name means child of the ocean. I think that's the Yangtze, but I have no idea how to spell it. I'm probably going to spell it wrong, but I'm going to go for it. Oh, there we go. There's the correct spelling. Appreciate the assist. 
Yep, I knew it was the Yangtze, didn't know how to spell it. Thank you, Smoo Smoo, for the assist. Appreciate that. All right. Let's go Bodies Water 400. All right. It's the smallest as well as the coldest ocean. Ooh, I have no idea. Is it the Arctic? <laughs> it was. I should have ran in. I should have rang in, but I didn't. <laughs> All right. The gold of the Nibelung is said to be hidden in this German river. No clue at all. Oh, the Rhine. You know what? I know it now. <laughs> ring in, Joe. I gotcha. <laughs> I should ring in on all of them. Uh, largest body of fresh water in North America. Largest body of fresh water. Is that Lake... Oh, what the hell? It's on the tip of my tongue. It's not Lake Okeechobee, is it? Oh, you know what? It might be Lake Superior. I'm going to go with that. I was thinking Great Lakes, but it might be... It might have been a trick, but who knows? Okay, it was Lake Superior. Hello, Carrie. Welcome in. Thank you very much for that continued subscription. Greatly, greatly appreciate that. All right, so here we are in Double Jeopardy. Uh, Glamour's your... Oh, I know that one. That is Monte Carlo. Never been to Monte Carlo, but I would love to go. I hear it's gorgeous. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Dinner took longer than expected. Th yes, Abby, I know you almost disowned me. I know you're from Michigan, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All right, so let's see what categories we got now that we actually have control of the board. So we got Dangerous Beasts, Islands, Material Evidence, Goddess, Frosty Flicks, and Take a Chance. Let's uh, stick with Take a Chance. Let's go for a thousand. Uh, card game where you try to shoot the moon. I don't know if that's spades. Oh, hearts. It was the other one. It was the other one. <laughs> All right, let's see. An Elvis of Tissa, don't step on. Oh, yeah, that's an easy one. Blue suede shoes. Who doesn't know that? I mean, everybody had to have heard a Elvis song at one point or another. <laughs> Do beasts? Okay, I'll 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 go to I'll go to dangerous beasts. Let's go let's go right in the middle. Dangerous beasts is six hundred. Okay, although not the most venomous, the snake takes up to ten thousand lives a year in India. That's probably the king cobra. I'm kind of surprised that it's not the most venomous. <laughs> no numbers. There we go. Alright, let's stick with Dangerous Beast. Let's go for a thousand. Okay, this fearsome spider can be... Re oh, yes. <laughs> wow, I'm surprised that's a thousand dollar question. That's super easy. Like, you think they put something harder there. Uh, let's see. If it's not Australian, it's not the most venomous. You know, that's a good point. I've heard that the most, like, venomous snakes are definitely in the outback. Alright, let's see. Its bite causes African sleeping sickness. I know that one. That should be a tsetse fly. I remember reading about that in a children's book. I forget the name of the story, but I do know it's a tsetse fly. Uh, let's see, that's what she said in regards to the hardest comment. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, you know, I need, I need a soundbite of that. <laughs> I, need to, I need to create a that's what she said soundbite. All right, let's see. The true vampire bat is native to this continent, not to Transylvania. Uh, I think they're native to Africa. Wow, not native to Africa. Okay, maybe they're native to Asia? I guess we're going to find out here if one of the other two computer players uh, ring in. 
Okay, apparently it's South America. I, I did not know that. Learn something new today. <laughs> South America, you had it in the chat. <laughs> okay, the Horrorfield John Carpenter remake set in a frozen wasteland. I wonder if that's the thing. It is the thing. I just didn't ringing fast enough. Alright, so they're going to take a chance. It is derived from the French word for wheel. That should be roulette. So I'm guessing that category is all about, like, gambling and chance games. So that, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> frozen. It's not frozen, Abby. <laughs> that is a good guess, though. Alright, let's see. Oh, I have no clue on that one. Oh, you know what? I thought it was guys and dolls. I second guess myself, and I didn't even didn't even ring in. Well, that's on me. Let's see. Describes corn tassels, beautiful hair, or a jockey's cap and shirt. Silky. Ah, oh, yeah. There we go. Silk. I'm too busy thinking about it and not ringing in on these questions. All right, the goddess of discord, she sowed the seeds of the Trojan War. I don't think that's Athena. You know what? I rang in, and you're probably right. I think it is Helen. No, it's not Helen. You know... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick myself at it if it is Athena. Oh, Eris. Okay, that 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 makes complete sense. All right, goddess of the hunt and English princess. It's not, it's not Diana. It is Diana. <laughs> That's all right. I'm still way ahead of these <laughs> these two computer players. Okay, poker hand of any save that would be a flush. There we go. I want to try at least break ten thousand before I go into the final Jeopardy round. Uh, let's see. After the mosquito, this reptile is Africa's biggest killer. Ooh, I have no idea. You know, not surprised that it's a crocodile. Yep, there we go. You all knew it. <laughs> Let's see. In 77, Ford proposed statehood for this commonwealth. I think that... <laughs> I just missed it, but I'm pretty sure it's Puerto Rico. I knew that, too. I just missed the buzz in. Alright, so they're going to stick with islands. Oh, that's an easy one. I'm not even. I'm not even gonna let him get the chance. So, located off the toe of Italy's boot, it's the Mediterranean's largest island. That would be Sicily, and that's actually where my father's family was from. <laughs> we don't know games. Level one four is haunting my dreams. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. So, um. Just to give you a little insight of what uh, We Don't Know Games is talking about. So he was playing Super Mario Brothers 3 um, using a uh, hands-free controller called a U-Force. And 1-4 uh, in Super Mario Brothers 3 is an auto-scrolling level. And he was just having a hell of a time with it. <laughs> it was quite entertaining to watch. Let me Let me tell you. Actually, no, before I choose the category, let me go ahead and let me go ahead and shout you out real quick. Um, if you like uh, retro streams and or pinball, we don't know games is uh, a fantastic person to watch. Follow them, enjoy their streams. You will not be disappointed. Alright, the Mutiny on the Bounty took place after it visited the South Sea Island. Oh, I read Mutiny on the Bounty in like the sixth grade. I didn't remember the island, and of course it was Tahiti. Alright, so they're going back to goddesses. And of course they got the freaking Daily Double! 
Oh, and they give him a gimme question. <laughs> That's some crap right there. Ah, uh, what the actual hell. Ah, uh, let's see. Don't know that one. <laughs> put in gibberish as a power move. Yeah, right? The first time they put in gibberish as a power move, and then they get the, the next daily double question right. Uh, Liz Taylor's first name in a 1944 horse racing film. <laughs> yeah, your mom. <laughs> I would go with your mom. Oh, you know what? All the co okay, I get, I get, I get the category now. It just, it just, it just totally dawned on me. <laughs> yep, I did know that one, but the computer beat me to it. That should be... That should be Tartan. Oh, yeah. There it is. Yep, smoothie smooth backing me up. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and finish out material evidence. Let's see, the sheer open weave muslin with a European name has tiny raised woven spots woven in. Ooh, never heard of dotted Swiss. That's weird. Hmm. Learn still learn something new playing this game. Oh, and they got the other daily double. What a crock. <laughs> there he goes jerking that giant again. Yeah, it's like <laughs> he's like fiercely, he's like, yeah! <laughs> so wrong. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is so funny. Wow, apparently apparently they did not know that question. <laughs> yeah, family show, family show. <laughs> uh so disturbing. Like like when they made this game, I don't think they had that in mind. Oh, you close Smooey Smooth. Ice Station Zebra. Hey, no worries. Well, hey, at least this is an easy one. You know, considering uh, I got to keep to the uh, the frosty theme of the category. And there we go. We got ten grand. <laughs> <sighs> okay, this adaptation of Eugene O'Neill play is set in a nineteen twelve saloon. Wow, no clue at all. Oh, the Iceman cometh. You know, it's like it's like I know the question after they give the answer, <laughs> but you can't think of it when they give it in like such obscure descriptions. All right, Mother of Cupid. She appears in a famous Botticelli painting, standing on a seashell. Who was the Mother of Cupid? Venus. Yep. Hey, some of you are smarter than me out there. This is probably why I've never done well on the Jeopardy test. <laughs> Oh, good. Yeah, big, big brain time for sure. <laughs> oh, man. So I didn't know this one, but I'm going to go with Minerva because you've been pretty spot on, uh, Smoothie Smooth. So I'm going to go with it. Oh, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> I totally spelled it wrong. It is definitely not Mini Vera. <laughs> Oh, I'm dumb. <laughs> oh, and it was Juno, so it was wrong anyway. <laughs> That's all right. 9,000 is not a terrible number. All right, let's see what the final Jeopardy category is. It is landmarks. We are going to bet the lot. Actually, no. We're going to go... We're going to do the 89.99 wager. And let's see what the computer does. So, 2580 there. And 1640. Okay. Alright, let's see what the final Jeopardy uh, answer is. Let's see. This former British landmark now stands in Lake Havasu, Arizona. Wow, what a gimme question. It's the original London Bridge. For those that did not know. I don't know the story of how it got here, but it is definitely 
the London Bridge. Yeah, Langdon Bridge. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the apparently the original London Bridge was like really, really small and it wasn't even a suspension bridge like the current one is. But uh, yeah, there's a little bit of trivia for you. The original London Bridge is in Arizona. All right, so won the game with $17,999. Now I wish like NES had like a money printer and they could, could give me that money because that would be fantastic. <laughs> but that's wild. Yeah. Yeah, believe it or not, the original first London Bridge is in Arizona. Yeah, one dollar short of my full potential. <laughs> All right, so that's Jeopardy. Uh, I'm gonna go just a little bit more obscure now. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to something fun. This is a terrible game, so I'm gonna warn everybody ahead of time. But uh, there was a company called Game Tech, and they were responsible for a lot of these game show translations into video game form. And I have to say, the video game translation of Double Dare is freaking horrendous. But I'm going to try it. <laughs> now keep in mind, I have never played this game at all. But I'm going to give it my best shot. Uh, ooh, Fort Boyard would have made an excellent video game. You know what, Abby? Funny you say that. There is a Fort Boyard video game. I think in Europe, they made, like, an Xbox game. I've only seen YouTube video of it, but there is one. Yeah, there is. I kid you not. There is a Fort Boyard video game. Uh, Mark Summers looks awful on the title screen. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, you know I think the, I think the artists in this game just tried to draw Mark Summers from like memory. <laughs> it's like oh yeah, Mark Summers has got a big old nose and a freaking pompadour. <laughs> yes, it's Sark Mummers. That's right, <laughs> totally Sark Mummers. All right, so once again we'll go right in the middle. Let's see, enter team name. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna let chat choose. What do, what am I gonna name my double dare team? And uh, remember, please keep it somewhat PG-13 so Twitch doesn't ban me. That'd be great. <laughs> the Schnikes. You know what? I'm going with it. I am going with Schnikes because yay, Chris Farley. Yep, we are going with the Schnikes. Alright, let's see what, what characters they have available to for choosing here. Well, at least at least the kids look somewhat normal. Oh yeah, there's a cool guy. <laughs> Alright, so apparently it's like the choice of like eight kids. <laughs> four boys and four girls, apparently. I you know, I think we I think we have to go with the sunglasses, dude. I think we got to go with it. All right, and uh, the NES has gone with Team Viper. <laughs> Mohawk Man or the kid that looks like me? <laughs> yep, we went with Mohawk Man. All right, so we got the toss-up challenge. Our Double Deer clowns are hungry and you'll get to feed them. The first team to get three eggs into the clown's mouth wins control of the questions. All right, so remember, I have never played this before, so I'm probably going to do horribly. So, I don't even know, like, what you're supposed to do. Okay, I'm guessing you have to, like, just get the right speed and, like, angle to throw eggs in somewhat into this clown's mouth. But I guess you just gotta find the right angle is, uh, the question. <laughs> like, I don't even know where to stop it. <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> All right, apparently apparently the NES is way better at this game than me. <laughs> you know, I probably did have to get them both dead center. But who knows? 
All right, so the first question. The Greek words meaning star and sail are combined to form which space outward? Yeah, that is totally astronaut. <laughs> All right, let's see, let's, see if the, let's see if the NES runs away with the game here. We got to remember, this is Double Dare. They're kids' questions. <laughs> so, of course, a lot of these are going to be gimmies. All right, so they've dared me. So let's see. I didn't even get a chance to really read the question. All right. So according to a recent survey, recent survey being like 1991, which vegetable is the least like in America? I don't know. That might be a toss up between Brussels sprouts and turnips. And I just realized I was on a timer. <laughs> All right. So I didn't even have a chance to think about it, but I bet it's Brussels sprouts. Nope. It's turnips. <laughs> it's probably Brussels sprouts now because they taste like little fart balls. So gross. All right, not doing too well here. <laughs> All right, if you soaked a slice of bread and eggs and milk and fried it, you're making French toast. Come on, dare me. Please dare me. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, Carrie. If they're cooked right, they still taste like little fart balls. I have had them cooked in bacon. I've had them drenched in cheese. Like, a million different ways, they taste like little green fart balls. And nobody else will ever be able to convince me. I've, I've tried them so many times, they just taste gross. Alright, which names do the Russians use to refer to their ass? Those are cosmonauts. <laughs> Soviet Nicks. That's a great name right there. <laughs> uh, let's see. Roast them, cover, and balsamic reduction. 10 out of 10. Uh, probably 0 out of 10 if I were to try them. Uh, let's see, what's a turn? It's probably a bird. That's what I'm going with. Yeah, like I said, I've tried them so much, cooked so many different ways. They just, they, they, they just taste gross. It's just not my thing. All right, which of the following is Pee Wee Herman's real name? Of course it's Paul Rubens. All right, we're going to catch up real quick now because these are kids' questions. <laughs> All right, let's see. Giving someone the gate is a slang expression for doing what? Wow, giving someone the gate? I've never actually heard that. We have a raid! Danny! Holy crap, Danny! Thank you so much for the raid! Appreciate it! Yeah, I have never heard give someone the gate, so I'm going to dare the computer and let's see what they do. Oh, thank you so much, Danny, for the raid. I appreciate that. That just makes me feel... So good. Wow, they went with giving him a fence part? Really? <laughs> oh, that's a fantastic answer. Oh, I love it. Okay, so giving some of the gate means throwing them out, apparently. But we'll go with that. Oh, thank you for the follow, Ben Osteen. Appreciate that. All right, back to the next question. See, 25% of the world's pigs can be found in which country? Ooh, um, I want to say China, but I'm not entirely sure, so I'm going to dare that one. Uh, JJ Man the Cub, appreciate the follow. Thank you, thank you very much for that. Uh, how did your stream go, Dammy? I saw you were doing uh, Dwarf Romantic. How, uh, how well did you score? Was it just a, uh, a chill Dwarf Romantic stream, just out of curiosity? All right, so they double dared me back. All right, let's let's see how bad this physical challenge is going to be. Uh, let's see, definitely chill. I'm not good at mid maxing that game. Yeah, neither am I. I think the best I've done in Dorf Romantic is like eight thousand points, <laughs> and I've never gotten higher than that. Uh, Chessy Black, thank you very much for the follow. All right, so we got ourselves a physical challenge. Let's see, putty golf. This is your chance to play Double Dare putty golf. All you have to do is put one egg into the hole to win. Since the pin is a difficult spot, your partner will use a bellows to help blow the egg into the hole. Watch out for splatters. Oh, good lord, this sounds terrible. Uh, Porto Wolf, thank you for the follow. Uh, let's see, I got 9,000 plus, but I was telling the story with all the things I was building. Uh, I love the lion. Well, thank you very much. Um... The lion is my channel's mascot. That is uh, Tosca the lion. Um, 
I also have a uh, stuffy representation of him sitting right next to me. Um, that is the handy artwork of my mod, uh, Dizzy Yeen. She does all of my emotes and uh, drawings. She's a fantastic person. So I'm going to shout her out real quick because she is amazing. She has uh, just started streaming herself doing uh, mostly Call of Duty streams right now. But please give her a follow. She's fantastic. Oh, Ella, I didn't see you uh, sneak in with a follow. I had no idea you weren't following me either, but hey, now you are, so I appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right, let's get to this physical challenge. Let's see how terrible this is. All right, so once again, this, uh, this dreaded speed and angle meter. <laughs> so I'm wondering if I do have to get them both, like, right in the middle. That's, that's what I think I need to do. Oh yeah, it looks like right in the middle is where it, where it needs to be, I think. Maybe a little more speed, a little on the angle. Nope, couldn't do it! <laughs> uh, these games are so terrible. <laughs> I think I was getting it like halfway through, but 20 seconds isn't a lot of time. Alright, in which galaxy do we live? Let's see, they get... Yep, they went with the Milky Way. I'd be surprised if the NES is going to dare me on that. <laughs> yeah, that one, that game was terribly awesome. Uh, so, all right, next question: In what South American country do the ancient Incas live? Oh, you're gonna you're gonna dare me on that one. All right, I can I can definitely use the money. I want to say the Incas lived in Peru. That should be the right answer. There we go. All right, so tied up the game and the end of round one. So we end in a tie. <laughs> All right. Halftime. Are they going to do like something weird for halftime? Oh, apparently not. All right, so the toss-up challenge for ha for round two. Our Double Dare Grill loves to catch bananas. First team to toss a banana to the gorilla's hand wins control. All right, let's give it a shot. All right, once again, just trying to get, like, middle of the road. That seems to be the right strategy here. Right in the middle of the road, pretty much. I think I'm going too fast, though. I need to, like, not that much speed, but right in the middle for an angle. Oh, come on. Oh, this is terrible. Too high there. Right in the middle, maybe just a little lower? That's what I'm thinking. Oh, no, that wasn't right either. I think I'm going to wind up getting beat on this toss-up challenge again. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Let's see, what a horrendous power meter. Yeah, that power meter is terrible. Like, you have to you have to stop the speed with the D-pad and then throw with the A button. It's, it's just super, super wonky. Uh, I have no idea what is happening. You know what? You know what, Chessie Black? Neither do I. <laughs> so before before I started this game, I, I've never actually played Double Dare on NES. So I'm kind of going into this completely just, you know, no knowledge. So I'm probably going to play this game super terribly. <laughs> so far, so good. All right, let's see. Cometophobia is the fear of what? Ooh, I have no idea. I don't think it's using cleansers to scrub bathtubs. It might be coming to the phone, but I'm going to double dare. Because I'm not hey, going to... Senpai? I'm not going to take the chance. Uh, Kev Meeple! <laughs> Notice me, Senpai. Alright, very well. Very well, Kev Meeple. You have been officially noticed. I hope you are well and fantastic. There you go. All right, so they they double dared back to me. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go with coming to the phone. That's what I'm gonna guess. I swear, if it's Comet, if it's the obvious, for once a phobia was the obvious. What the actual hell? That's not how phobias are supposed to work. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. 
Uh, thank you for that gift subscription to Kev Meeple Carry. I appreciate that. Let's see, who was the first man to hold office of the vice president? It was not Jefferson. No, no, it was not. It was John Adams. Man, why did they give me a chance to guess that question? Oh, well, so be it. <laughs> yeah, but now I have a lot of question catching up to do. Because I am down by a hundred bucks. Alright, let's see. A device that recorded how people walked was invented by Dr. Russell Plato Schwartz. What did he call it? Wow, I have no idea. I'm gonna dare it. Because I have no clue. I mean, Schwartz's strutometer sounds, like, silly. Maybe RPS altimeter? Yeah, but altimeter, like, measures, like, height in, like, airplanes. So I don't think it's an altimeter. Yeah, why is the other team getting the easy questions? This is crap. You know what? I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go with C because A just seems way too far fetched. It was C. There we go. So A was far fetched, and altimeter definitely doesn't measure steps. So it was whatever that was. <laughs> okay, if your dentist told you that yours was a class true malocclusion, what would you need to do? Um, I don't know. I don't know if you need to have... I don't know if that's a braces term or have your teeth cleaned. I don't think it's have your teeth cleaned. <laughs> Look for a new dentist. You know, maybe maybe it is, like, completely just gibberish. Oh, so it was. It was have the braces put on. I should have guessed it. I went, I went against my better judgment. I should have guessed it. <laughs> I'd bet A. Uh, oh, come on. Dare me. Please dare me. Please dare me. Wow, I got what I wanted. <laughs> so if you were looking at a lambda, what you, would you be seeing? Of course it's a letter in the Greek alphabet. All right, for once I got a, for once I got a softball question. All right. Hopefully this is another easy one. Let's see. On which TV quiz show... Wow. I think I think it was a sign that uh, I played Jeopardy first. <laughs> that is so perfect. All right. I'm, ho I'm hoping the second round is going to end here soon so I can, you know, end on a lead. Uh, let's see. Which country has Buenos Aires as its capital? That is Argentina. There we go. Totally back in the game now. So I guess I'll just keep answering these questions until the game ends, and hopefully they don't give me a, uh... Let's see, what type of flowers in American Beauty? Oh, another raid incoming! Fox Walks! Thank you so much! Oh, thanks to the movie, I know it's a rose. <laughs> oh, more raiders. Thank you, thank you so much. I am feeling the love tonight. So awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the raid, Fox Walks. How did your Skyrim playthrough go today? Hopefully it went well. Uh, let's see, what was the name of the horse Paul Revere rode on his famous midnight ride? Ooh, I honestly don't know. I'm gonna dare that. Uh, how's it going? It's going pretty well. We, uh, already finished up a game of Jeopardy. Now I'm doing, uh, Double Dare, which is a really horrible interpretation of the Nickelodeon game show, I must say. <laughs> uh... Let's see, I'm getting it double dared back to me. Let's see, Skyrim was great. Finally got my sexy new follower. Awesome! Um, I will absolutely introduce you in a minute. Uh, let's see, Actually, I'm going to go with Brown Beauty. Let's see if it's right. It was right! So, for those that don't know, Fox Walks is the uh, other half of We Don't Know Games. She is a fantastic Skyrim streamer. Uh, awesome person all around, and a great real-life friend. Uh, if uh, Abby or Carrie, if you'd be so kind to uh, give Fox a shout-out, that would be fantastic of you. Oh, introduce myself! <laughs> Not me. Oh, anyway, yeah, me. So, I am Joe. 
also known as Phantom Meeple. I am a variety streamer of retro games and the occasional board game. Um, and uh, I pretty much just try and keep it wholesome, so that's me. Alright, so let's see. How in the heck do I... Oh, are you kidding me? Okay, how do I... Okay, why am I not moving? Oh, that's ridiculous. I have to, like, mash left and right on the D-pad to run? Oh, this is horrendous. <laughs> this is the worst obstacle course ever. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see, we could do a poll on every question. Uh, you know, I could do a poll on every question if uh, some most of them weren't timed. Alright, so two obstacles down. I don't think I am going to finish this obstacle course. I might get halfway through since I just figured out how to run. <laughs> oh, this is so bad. <laughs> uh, the controls are just super terrible. Like, who could- who made it that you have to mash forward and back to run? <laughs> well, at least I made it through five. Uh, let's see, already time to take a screen bake. Thanks for stopping by, Jess. Appreciate you stopping by. Oh, man. Let's see, Bigfoot has the same controls for the drag race. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't under I did not understand that obstacle course at all. Mashing forward and back so bad. Uh, but you know what? At, le at least we won. So that's the important thing. <laughs> all right. So that was Double Dare. Uh, let's go ahead and change it up. Um, let's do something a little more uh, straightforward. Uh, I am going to do Wheel of Fortune, because that's easy enough for everybody. It's Hangman! Uh, I am going to do... There are, were uh, three versions of Wheel of Fortune on NES. There was a junior version, there was a regular version, and then they had a version featuring Vanna White, which um, has the updated rules for the bonus round. So we're going to do that one, but it really looks horrendous. But I'm going to go with it. Uh, just, just, just listen to that theme song. That's just so bad. <laughs> All right, let me change up the game here real quick. And then we will get going. There we go. Wheel of Fortune featuring Vanna White. Okay, game has been updated. Oh, uh, Bionicle, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate that. Alrighty. So, we will go ahead and play against the computer. We will go right in the middle for difficulty level. Uh, is the real show still going? Yep. Wheel, Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy are still going strong. I think they've been on the air, like, 30 years or something like that. It's, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of wild how long both those shows have been on the air. Alright, so if uh, Jeopardy and uh, Double Dare didn't have terrible characters, Wheel of Fortune has even worse characters. Like, like, like they're all like just strange caricatures, but with the exception they don't have different color palettes. I, I, I think we have to go with this guy right here. <laughs> yeah, they, they all look like they're drunk. They look so terrible. Like, I mean, I mean, I, I get it. You, you make games to, you know, have kids and maybe some adults feel like they're on a game show, but just the artistry of some of these characters. All right, we're, go we're, go we're going with the doofy blonde guy because I don't know <laughs> any better. Uh, they all look like the Mad Magazine cartoons. They really do. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and spin and let's see what we get. All right, so we're starting out with 350. Category is place. 
So Wheel of Fortune rules tell me always go with R, S, T, L, and N, E first because those are the most used letters in the English language. And we found ourselves in R. I don't think I want to buy a vowel yet. Let's go ahead and spin one more time. See what we get. <laughs> I'm liking the stash, man. Yeah, that, that is a fantastic stash that the, uh, the guy in the middle's got going on, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, you know, the Wheel of Fortune featuring Vanna White, and yeah, they give her that, like, horrible, like, green tint. Like, really? <laughs> it's totally alien Vanna. Alright, let's go ahead and buy an E, see what that gets us. Oh, we do get an E. Alright, still don't know what it is yet. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that is totally a pimp green stash. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and spin. Hopefully nothing bad happens. All right, 300 bucks. Let's get the S out of the way. All right, we got ourselves an S. Still don't know what it is yet, though. Hmm. I'm going to buy another vowel. I think I'm going to go with an O. And we do have an O. Uh, let's see. Vanna White's lesser known cousin, Vanna Green. Right? There's a good one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and spin. Because I'm pretty sure the second word ends in an M. And hopefully there's another M in the pu... Oh, you know what? That first word might totally be... Oh, you're right. I think it is guest bathroom. I think that's what it's going to be. I think we're going to solve it. Let's go with it. Let's go with guest bathroom. Do we have ourselves to solve? That we do! Alright! Carry with the solve! Nice! <laughs> what about Vanna Blue? <laughs> Let's see, there's a reason why no one will play with me. <laughs> hey, you know what? In, th in this case, you are doing fantastically. So thank you very much for that solve. I will take it. <laughs> All right, so round two is going to be a person. And since we started first, we have to wait for the computer to take their turn. So let's see what happens. Maybe they'll get us some letters and... Uh, get us an easy solve here. Alright, so they managed to spin 450, and they're picking a T. And of course they get one, so they get to keep their turn. Yeah, I know it's a bit rude that we didn't get to start since we solved the puzzle, but hey, that's that's the rules of Wheel of Fortune. Everybody gets a turn, apparently. All right, 250, and they're going with an H, and there probably is one there. Oh, I have no clue who that could be with a with a T and an H as far as a person's name. <laughs> Them's the rule. Zero stars do not wreck. Ah, I'll lose a turn. All right, so now the uh, the second computer player gets to go. Yeah, they get turns, unfortunately. All right, so they're good. So they're going with an S. Hmm. I might have a clue, but it's a, it'd be a far fetched guess. All right, so they're going with an N, and of course there's one there. Hmm. Still no clue. Uh, yes, I, I am Joe. <laughs> it's, it's, I put it up there to make it easy. <laughs> uh, let's see, Dustin or Justin something. Yeah, maybe. Wait, no. Oh, I thought I, I thought I would have had an idea. As soon as you said Dustin. Hey, no worries. No need to apologize. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, Let's see, let's go ahead and get an R out of the way. 
All right, there is an R, so it's not. So it's not Dustin. Let me go ahead and buy a vowel. Let's get an E. Wow, no E's. Hmm. All right, so they bought an O. <laughs> Wow, I really don't know what this is. Like this is an odd name. I bet you it's going to I bet you it's going to pop right out if if one of them winds up solving it. Ooh, now I really don't know. Oh, we're getting we're getting a solve. Uh, Christy McNichol. Of course, a celebrity from the 90s that I had no idea who it is. <laughs> uh, that wasn't even a gimme puzzle. But hey, I'm still in the lead with 2150, so all is not lost. I have no idea who Christy McNichol even is, but apparently she was famous? Question mark? <laughs> hey, I said at the beginning, the, the, the questions in these games are completely dated. <laughs> Ah, uh, but you know what? It's 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 good nostalgia. All right, we got ourselves a big puzzle here, so decent chance to make a lot of money, hopefully. Uh, let's see. She had posters. Uh, this is a pretty pretty fun idea for a stream because we can help and guess and such. Yeah, I I thought it'd be a fun idea for a stream too, because um, I love game shows. I am crazy about them. I will watch them all the time. And I played these games incessantly as a kid. And it's just, I mean, they're, they're kind of near and dear to me. So, you know, why not? Have a, have a little fun. All right. So 400 bucks. We've got a phrase. There's got to be an S in there somewhere. Got to be a couple S's. One S. Wow. I thought it'd be way more S's. All right, let's go ahead and spin it again. Uh, let's see. I look Christy up, and I still don't recognize her. All right, in enlighten me, Fox. Who who was Christy McNichol? Because I have no idea. And I just went bankrupt. Fantastic. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's no fun. All right, so they guessed an H, and there's no H's in the puzzle. Let's see, Leslie's buying an E. Wow, no E's. Alright, this is uh this is quite the interesting puzzle. Uh let's see, she's known for role such roles as Angel in the film Little Darlings, Polly in the film Only When I Laugh, and Barbara Weston in the TV sitcom. Okay, I so I know her from Empty Nest. I that was a show I watched when I was a kid. Um actually a spin-off of the Golden Girls, if I'm not mistaken. Because the uh, the doctor in that show wound up being the main character on Empty Nest. Uh, let's go ahead and buy an O. Let's see if there's an O anywhere in there. Wow, one O out of all of that. Uh, let's see. It's one of those gibberish answers from Jeopardy. I just know it. <laughs> uh, you know, I think I want to buy another vowel. I'm going to buy an A. Oh, three A's. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, let's see, I guess she was on Golden Girls for an episode two. Yeah, so like I said, um, Empty Nest was a spinoff of Golden Girls, so I'm really not surprised that she had guest starred on Golden Girls. All right, come on, big money. Big money. All right, 550, we'll take that. Um, Got to be an R up there. All right, we do have an R. Let's see, damn, I wish I had enough points for put it on. Should have saved it when you had a full house like now. You know what? Good point. <laughs> oh, there we go. Somebody has the points. All right, so as soon as I'm not under the timer, I will put on the onesie. All right, so let's go ahead and spin first. Uh, let's see. Granted Colonials Asgard. <laughs> uh... You know what? There may be there might be a C in there. There is a C. <laughs> I still have no idea what this is, though. I think that middle word is political, though. 
So I'm going to spin and guess a P. Uh, that is if I didn't lose my turn. <laughs> Alright, so while the computer is going, I will go ahead and put on the onesie. So bear with me, everybody. I will be right back. Oh, dang it, I know the puzzle now. <laughs> Alrighty, I've almost got it on, but you know what, as, as I was putting on the, uh, as I was putting on my onesie, I know what the puzzle is. So I am hoping that Leslie completely screws up her turn and then I am going to go for the solve. Well, there we go. All right, it's mostly on. I will go with it. Ugh! Okay, there we go. So it is granting political asylum. Yep, I, I totally knew it as I was putting it on. <laughs> yeah, that's not really a common phrase, but it is definitely a phrase. <laughs> uh, all right, so let me finish buttoning this up now. All right, so I am still totally winning. And round four is going to be an event. So let's go ahead and spin and get us some more money. Ah, ooh, Sailor Moon Diana one. Uh, close. It's actually a Luna onesie, but uh, you are totally right. It is. Uh, it is definitely more the shade of Diana. That uh, I will give you that one. Uh, let's go with a T. Oh, we got two T's up there. All right, fantastic. Ooh, I missed one button. There we go. Now I feel better. Uh, let's see. You know, I was just saying that phrase to everybody I know earlier today for no unrandom reason, right? Like, yeah, I was totally talking to my friends the other day about granting political asylum because, you know, that's just a thing people talk about. <laughs> uh, let's see. With two letters up there, someone guesses the entire puzzle. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's totally tomato gruelé. We don't know games. Totally tomato gruelé. You know what? It might be tomato gruelé because there was no S's. So who knows? You could have been right. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Ah. All right. So they're guessing an R. and We've got one R in the puzzle. Well, there goes your tomato theory. <laughs> Ooh, but it's in a, an event. Like... What kind of event starts with the letters T and R, though? Well, there's no L's. A <laughs> trap and grommet. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, just, we're just guessing all the obscure events now, aren't we? <laughs> oh, that's so good. All right, so they got an N on the board. So it's not trapping Gromit. <laughs> uh, let's see. I've seen someone guess the puzzle with nothing on the board. You know what? I have too. There, there's been, there's definitely been a handful of times on Wheel of Fortune where someone just knows it, and it's ridiculous that they, that they, you know, guess it completely right. All right. So let's buy an E. A uh, one E. That doesn't help us very much. <laughs> trapping Gromit. <laughs> All right, let's buy an A. Well, it's not Gromint, but it could definitely be trapping. Um, I'm going to buy an I. 
we do have an I. Wow, I really don't know. Although I think, I think there might be an M in that bottom word there. So let's go ahead and spin. <laughs> Trapping Araminth. <laughs> oh, traffic accident. Oh, it's totally traffic accident. Yep, there it is. I had 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 to get the C. <laughs> All right, Abby, you got you got the solve. <laughs> Wait, nope, not a B. I didn't want a B. There we go. <laughs> I almost peed from excitement. Hey, you got one. I'm I'm proud of you, Abby, and I appreciate the assist. All right, so still winning with fifty-seven hundred dollars. I'm pretty sure round four is the uh, last round, so I think we're gonna go on to the bonus round. Yeah, we're gonna win big money. Ooh, play for one of these prizes: a car, a boat, jewelry, a cruise, or twenty-five thousand dollars. Hmm. All right, chat. What letter am I going with? Let's pick one. What are we going with? I know I'm, fe I'm feeling good about one of the E's. <laughs> Mama needs all of the above. <laughs> yeah, let's. I'm gonna go with the yeah. I'm gonna go with the first E, right in the middle. All right, so we'll be so normal bonus round rules. We get R, S, T, L, N, and E. And then three consonants and a vowel. So let's see what we got. So we got a thing. So let's go ahead and get the R, S, T, L, N, E out of the way. Uh, let's see. This is super fun, but I need to start dinner. I'm going to work on my phone, though. I love this idea. It makes it very interactive. I appreciate you sticking around, Fox, and also appreciate the lurk. Hopefully dinner is tasty. Oh, Wow. Okay, so it's clearly electric something. So we're going to do a C. Um, I don't know that bottom word, though. Oh, you know what? It might be... No, it can't be electric slide because there's no L. They've already given the R, S, T, L, N, E. Um, oh, no, I ran out of time and all I got was a C. Hold on. Let's go with an M... Oh, now I have to choose a vowel. I guess I'll go with the I. So I got two consonants and a vowel. So it's electric something. Oh, it could be shock. There it is. <laughs> All right, so let's see what kind of big time prize that we've won. Congratulations. Ooh, we won a boat. <laughs> yeah. All right, so between so between like Wheel of Fortune, Double Dare, and Jeopardy, we've won like fifty grand worth of theoretical prizes and money so far. This is so fantastic. <laughs> All right. Time to switch up the games again. Uh, I'm going to go to a uh, little lesser known uh, video game based on a game show. And I might be completely dating myself here. Um, this was back in the era when MTV actually played music. But uh, believe it or not, they actually did have a game show. And it was based on, uh, it was all about TV trivia. And it was called Remote Control. So we're going to go play remote control. So uh, if uh, anybody's got like uh, 70s, 80s, and very early 90s TV trivia knowledge, this is where it's going to come in handy. All right, change the game again. There we go. Change to remote control. Ah, I remember that show. Yeah, I, I loved watching remote control as a kid. All right, so we've got, uh, again, we've got our just random stock and terrible characters. 
Uh, let's see, this is a fun stream, but I'm off to bed. I love the whole game show vibes. Hope to catch a stream again. Well, I appreciate you stopping by, Chessie Black, and I hope to see you again. I, th I think we're going to go with the person with the green shades, because that just looks awful. <laughs> uh, let's see, I remember hearing about this show, but never saw it. Uh, honestly, Fox, if you look on YouTube, there's probably episodes randomly on YouTube from, you know, people who taped the show back then. It's really ridiculous. Just, just the, the way they, like, phrase the questions and, and, and the format of the show, it's completely ridiculous. All right, so basic premise of the show is that there was nine channels, and each channel was a different category, but you didn't know the category till you chose it. So if you got something good, you just had to keep selecting it. So tell you what, chat, I will let you choose the first channel. Where am I going? One through nine. I'll give it a second. Uh, fortunately, I am not on the clock for choosing categories, so uh, I, f I figure we can get the interactivity in uh, this way. So let's see, we got we got one vote for three. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Let's 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 do this. Let's do this correctly. Oh, uh, you know what? They're only gonna let me do five responses for a poll? That's silly. I can't do nine. <laughs> oh well. Alright, you know, let's go with three. I'm on three. We'll do three. So whatever happened to? So, this category is old actors never die, they just find more demeaning roles to play. <laughs> Alright, so, she's staying alive as a screenwriter, but Karen Lynn Gorney will always be remembered as John Travolta's dance partner in what film? Well, that's a simple one. That's gonna be Saturday Night Fever. Alright, so, starting starting out in the lead. All right, um, I think we'll change up the categories. Let's go across the board to seven. And we've got the wrestling channel. <laughs> Is it a sport? Is it a sham? Who really cares? <laughs> That's true, even today. All right, let's see. What popular hand tool is also a nickname for notorious wrestling bad guy Greg Valentine? I think... I think it's the hammer. All right, that was a lucky guess. Uh, not familiar, but it seemed like the, a good guess to me. Uh, let's go ahead and stay away from the wrestling channel, because those are probably going to be really, really old questions about wrestling that I'm not super familiar with. Let's go to channel one, see what's up there. Odd couple. Is this about the odd couple? It really is. What was the biggest thing on Murray the Cop's face? I think Murray the Cop had a big nose. Yep, he did, but the computer beat me to it. <laughs> uh, so, so the host of the show was a guy named Ken Ober. He died, like, I think 10 or 15 years ago. But, like, some of his one-liners, they tried to recreate in this game, and they're really bad. Uh, let's see. On what night of the week do the Odd Couple guys regularly play poker? I think they played on Tuesdays. Nope, it wasn't Tuesdays. Apparently I'm not uh, current on my Odd Couple knowledge. <laughs> this host is mean. Yeah, Ken Ober was a total jerk. Like, if you, if you go on YouTube and find episodes of uh, Remote Control, yeah, he was not a nice guy. But I think that was just kind of a character he was playing. Truth be told, I don't know. All right, so apparently the computer's sticking with the odd couple. All right, name the flighty English sisters who lived upstairs from Oster and Felix. Oh, I have no idea. I'm just going to guess and say the Pigeon Sisters. And it was a lucky guess. <laughs> All right. I will say one thing I don't like about this game is, like, the repetitive, um, the repetitive rendition of, uh, the theme song. It's just, it's just terrible. Alright, so the Elvis channel. According to the Elvis catalog, which is more valuable? Teddy bear perfume, hound dog orange lipstick, or an Elvis pocket watch? 
How the hell would I know? <laughs> I'm gonna go with the pocket watch. Okay, so I guess perfume or lipstick is more valuable than a watch? I mean, this makes no sense to me, but... I... Wow, lipstick is more valuable than perfume or a watch. Uh, some of these questions <laughs> are probably going to be really off the wall. All right, so they're sticking with the Elvis channel. All right, in a song made famous by the king, you can knock me down, step on my face, slander my name all over the place, burn my house, steal my car, drink my cider from my old fruit jar, but what do you have to lay off of? I'm pretty sure that was Blue Suede Shoes. All right, I know my Elma songs. <laughs> wow, I know my trivia. I guess I don't have a social life. <laughs> uh, the, why is this game attacking me? <laughs> this is so bad. All right, PhD TV. So questions about doctors on TV. This should be fun. All right, what book read by millions was the source of Gilligan's name? Ooh. Watch it be the phone book. Unbelievable. The Los Angeles phone book is where they named Gilligan. That's fantastic. <laughs> oh, no, that's me, Meeple. <laughs> Oh, as far as the social life? Is it, were they talking about you? <laughs> Alright, so on Channel 8 for reruns. Let's see, from a coal mine to a basement in Milwaukee, what kind of bird found a new home with Laverne and Shirley? Oh. That's gotta be a canary. Because canaries are in coal mines. Alright, didn't even need to know about the show. Just had to have some basic, uh, some basic knowledge. Let's go back to PhD TV, though. Alright, Bill Cosby was the first black actor to star in a network TV drama series. What character did he play in I Spy? Oh, I have no freaking clue. I don't even think I've seen I Spy. Ah, apparently it was Alexander Scott. Alright, good to know. <laughs> oh, the cat's back. Let's see if he's gonna... Let's see if he's gonna stay up there. I think he will. Alright, so end of the first round, and it's snack time. So halfway through the show, they would drop, like, popcorn on top of the contestant's head, and they would have to, like, pick up a bowl and, like, catch whatever the snack is. <laughs> uh, Laverne and Shirley is one of my favorite shows, and I don't remember them having a bird. Yeah, you know what? Me, me either, honestly. Alright, so, six feet under. Once these stars are on top of the world, now they're under it. <laughs> Alright, so, dead celebrities. Uh, name the big-eared actor who made screen history for saying, Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. That's an easy one. That's totally Clark Gable. Because who could, who could mistake those giant ears that he had? Hey, Brambeard Gaming, welcome in. I used to play the crap out of this game. Really? Um, I never actually played Remote Control when it came out, but I did watch it a lot on MTV when it was actually a thing. All right, so we got the Stillmore Primetime channel. Al Michaels does the play-by-play, -play, but what former New York Giant is the color analyst on Monday Night Football? But when? I think that I think that might have been Frank Gifford. I don't think it was Joe Namath. All right, it was Frank Gifford. Apparently, I got a lucky guess right there. Um, I think I'm gonna stick with Channel Three. Still more prime time. Maybe we'll do well with this category. Uh, let's see. What Saint Elsewhere nurse has seen four marriages and five children? Oh Lord! I watched Saint Elsewhere as a kid, but I don't remember any of the characters from it. Hell, I barely knew that Howie Mandel played a doctor on it. <laughs> so that that's like the extent of my St. Elsewhere knowledge. Oh, and, and the ending of St. Elsewhere, but I won't spoil that. Unless y'all really want me to. 
Ooh, beauties and assassins. This should be a fun, fun category. Some things go together naturally. Milk and cookies, fish and chips, and of course, beauties and assassins. Great. All right, let's see. She starred in Top Gun and Witness, and he's the hockey mask killer of Friday the 13th. Name them. Oh, well, that's easy. That's Kelly McGillis and Jason. <laughs> oh, this is going to be quite the category. I think we're going to stick with this one. This one might be fun. All right, next question. Give me the names of the sexy singer from the band Blondie and the country that bad boy Joe, Joe Stalin came from. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that's totally Debbie Harry in the Soviet Union. <laughs> I like this category. It's kind of like a, a strange before and after thing going on. All right, let's finish it off. <laughs> Meeple is a beauty. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, let's see. She's the beauty who went from Cosby to a different world, and he's the actor who assassinates villains as Dirty Harry. Uh, that's totally Lisa Bonet and Clint Eastwood. Wait, no. Is it? Yeah, that's Lisa Bonet and Clint Eastwood. I'd almost second-guess myself there. <laughs> My ex is an assassin. <laughs> Are they really? <laughs> All right, so channel one is done. Let's uh, let's pick another one. Let's go to the other side of the board to nine. See what's there. Doctor Blister. It's the evil Doctor Blister, the world's foremost expert on celebrity rumors. Oh, great! Eighties celebrity rumors. Humphrey Bogart is rumored to be the model for the baby on the label of what brand of fa baby food? Um, I'm pretty sure Humphrey Bogart is not the Gerber baby, but I knew he was rumored to be. Alright, I am clearly running away with this game. <laughs> Let's stick with Dr. Blister. Alright, David Brinkley is rumored to be the father of what superstar model? Uh, pretty sure that's Christy Brinkley? There we go. Uh, okay, also going to get food. Hey, no worries, we don't know no games. Hopefully you and Fox enjoy dinner. <laughs> I need to be careful. <laughs> oh, don't worry, don't worry, Karja. We, uh, we won't out you here. <laughs> you are in a safe space. <laughs> oh, we found the Brady Network on Channel 5. Let's see, which Brady kid has a lisp? That was Cindy. I guess I guess these questions are getting easier as the game goes along. This is uh, this is fantastic. Let's stick with the Brady the Brady network. All right, let's see which Brady developed a fear of heights after falling out of a treehouse. I think that was Bobby. All right, I know my Brady trivia. <laughs> hey, the host says I have a great brain. <laughs> Let's see, how do I know he isn't here? <laughs> you know what? That's a good point. We don't know if he's here. But let's just say he's not. <laughs> just for the sake of safety. <laughs> uh, which Brady kid once decided he needed a new personality and started acting like Humphrey Bogart? Um, well, that wasn't Greg, so I think it was Peter. Yeah, because Greg was Johnny Bravo. So, And I don't think Cindy would act like Humphrey Bogart. All right, we cleared out the Brady channel. Uh, let's see what's on channel four. Ranger Bob. It's a visit from everybody's favorite outdoorsman, lovable Ranger Bob. You're losing 10 points, but gaining a valuable safety tip. Really? <laughs> Up until yesterday, I thought cougars made pretty good house pets, but you might say I've had a change of heart. Here's a safety tip for the 300 kids who received baby cubs from me yesterday. Get out of the house. Run for your lives. They'll tear you to shreds. <laughs> what a way to lose 10 points. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Let's see Channel 7. All right. Channel 7 is MASH. All right. What is Colonel Potter's first name? Ooh, I don't know Colonel Potter's first name. 
Well, it's not Henry. I'll take a guess and go with Benjamin. And that's wrong. So apparently Colonel Potter's first name is Sherman. At a process of elimination. <laughs> but you know what? That I will give you that card, Joe. That was definitely worth the 10-point loss, because that was kind of funny. All right, so we hit off the air. It's the end of round one. And somebody's going away. So on the actual show, they basically, like, tip their chair back and, like, put them into a room. But in this game, they <laughs> shock them with lightning. <laughs> Oh, you knew it was Sherman. I should have waited. <laughs> All right, so the final round. I'll name the show. You name the city it took place in. All right, let's see. So the Flintstones, that was Bedrock. St. Elsewhere, I think, was Boston. Cheers was also Boston. Dallas was obviously in Dallas. Night Court was in New York. WKRP was Cincinnati, Good Times was Chicago, Mork and Mindy, I think was also Chicago? No, I guess not. LA, maybe? Oh, Mork and Mindy was Boulder, Colorado, really? All right, I think I got most of those. All right, I won the final round. Hooray for that! <laughs> Let's see, we have a winner. All those hours in front of the TV have paid off and given new meaning to your humdrum existence. Today I'm proud to be your video game. <laughs> what? <laughs> Treasure this moment always. Wow, what a way to win a game. <laughs> oh, that is too funny. All right, uh, I think I've got time for one more. Let's go ahead and do one more game. Um, I think what I'm going to do for this last one, this, uh, this will have a little bit more chat participation, I think. Uh, I'm going to do actually one of my favorite game shows of the eighties. Um, I love the revival of it. It was fantastic. Uh, even, even the 2000 revival with Tom Bergeron was great, but, uh, we're going to play some Hollywood squares. Uh, do you watch mash? I I haven't watched MASH religiously, but I have watched the show. Um, the only thing I can tell you about it is that it took place in the Korean War and that the finale was like one of the largest watched in TV history. That's really all I can tell you about it. <laughs> uh, let's see. If so, do you like Frank Pierce or BJ best? Oh, uh, I think I got to go with Pierce. If I'm if I'm being honest. All right, so one contestant. Well, we definitely don't want to be a busty blonde, or do we? <laughs> uh, let's go through the characters here. So we've got, like, muscular guy with a pompadour. We've got busty brown-haired woman. Oh, yeah, that's a surfer, dude. Wait, so you kidding me? Four contestants. That's our choice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, chat. I'm leaving it to you. Let me set up a poll here real quick. So we've got the busty blonde. We've got muscle dad. <laughs> we've got we've got brown bombshell. And we've got Surfer Dude. Alright, now I will let that go for a couple of minutes. And we'll see what happens. All right, apparently Twitch would not let me put in Busty Blonde, but obviously it's Busty Blonde. <laughs> All 
I'm here. I'm curious to see who you all pick because. I don't know, just, it, it's kind of weird that there's only four contestants to choose from. Uh, I don't know, if, I, if, I, if I'm going to have an opinion here, I don't know, either, either Muscle Dad or Surfer Dude? I mean, either of the ladies wouldn't be bad either, truth be told. But, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to play whatever you all choose. All right, so far Surfer Dude is winning, <laughs> so we uh, we may go with Surfer Dude here. <laughs> Be a Dilf, he looks arrogant and cocky. Yeah, I think I think that dude. Yeah, he does kind of look arrogant and cocky now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Let's see, Surfer Dude looks the most absurd. I say go with that one. Yeah, I think I think I think Surfer Dude's gonna take it. There's only there's only like thirty more seconds to vote, but I'll I'll let it go to the end. Just to see what just to see what happens. Yeah, by a full two votes. <laughs> I've only got two votes for Surfer Dude. But hey, it's uh <laughs> it's what you're all going with. Oh now we got three votes for Surfer Dude. Alright, Surfer Dude's got it. <laughs> All right, so we are going to play as Surfer Dude. All right, Surfer Dude it is. And of course, got to be my namesake. All right, so I guess they didn't actually uh, put in celebrities. So they all have just random generic names. Let's see, we've got Mark, we've got Val, Mike, Pam, Dean, Ruth, Daz, Liz, and Rob. <laughs> oh yeah, I know all nine of these people. They are totally recognizable to me. <laughs> uh, well, let's start in the center square. All right, so we got our question. Egyptian mummies were found wearing them, and the ancient Greeks and Romans wore them, so did the French in the 17th century. Who powdered theirs? What were they all wearing? Hmm. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. How's your sex life? <laughs> For those who get that reference. All right, let's see. The same underwear for a week. Okay, so Rob says the answer is wigs. That seems sensible. I'm going to agree with that answer. And it was wigs. All right, so. So, Sue is going with Mark. Let's see, why would your dentist attach electrodes to your mouth and body and then run an electric current through your mouth? Really? That's a thing? <laughs> to jumpstart his Mercedes. I, I love how they have smart-ass comments. Really? Dentists would shock you to reduce pain? That seems, like, archaic. <sighs> Alright, I think we need to go with Liz for the early block. Alright, finish this popular rhyme. Monday's child is fair of face. Tuesday's child is full of grace. Wednesday's child is full of low. And Thursday's child... I don't know this rhyme. <laughs> Thursday's child has got to go. Uh, let's see. Thursday's child has far to go. That does not sound right. I don't know the rhyme, but that doesn't sound right. Apparently it was right. So Circle got the square. Great. I'm going to hand Sue an easy win. A growing number of parents think their young children should be present when their mother is giving birth. Does the American Psychiatric Association agree? I wouldn't want to be there. I wouldn't want to be in the room for a birth as a child. Hell no. Yeah, it's too stressful for a child. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, so now I get a chance to go for the win with Mike. All right, according to the Center for Health Statistics, what's the minimum number of hours of sleep you should get for good health? Well, I hope it's, I mean, it's like eight now. 
just four solid hours. I don't think it's four. Yeah, at least seven. And it still is, I think, at least seven. All right, so we've won round one. All right, let's hope we can keep up this momentum. Oh, and it's the secret square round. I wonder what amazing prize we would win if we find the secret square. All right, let's see. True or false? The monkey wrench was named for its inventor, Charles Monkey. I swear if that's true, that would be ridiculous. It's true. Okay. I did not know that. <laughs> uh, let's go with Daz. Let's see what Daz has. According to the Wall Street Journal, you can now buy artificial cheese. What's the main advantage of artificial over natural cheese? It only gives you it gives you only artificial gas. It costs less? No, I don't think so. I think it lasts longer. Okay, apparently it costs less. All right, so now Sue's going to go for the win. <laughs> I'm now thinking of Daz watches. <laughs> An experienced Spelunker will always explore it in groups, but will never take anything. What do Spelunkers explore? I'm pretty sure Spelunkers explore caves. So, she's going to get that right. Uh, vegan cheese doesn't cost less, though. No, it absolutely does not cost less. Maybe in 1989 it costs less? Maybe that that's, that's what they're going with? All right. Let's start with Rob again in the center square. According to experts, in what decade did the automobile become the chief means of passenger transportation in the U.S.? About a week after the pothole was invented. <laughs> you know, I think the Roaring Twenties makes sense. All right, it was the Twenties. Cool. All right, and Sue is going to go with Mark. All right, her question. According to American Health Magazine, is it ever a good idea to put oatmeal in your shoes? Maybe dry oatmeal? <laughs> yes, if you like to eat breakfast on the run. Oh, yes, oatmeal will help soak up excessive moisture. Yeah, I figured as much. Um, let's go with Daz. Would you eat a Tender Pod bush snap? What the heck is a Tender Pod bush snap? I'd sooner swallow my mouthpiece. Yeah, I don't think you'd. Yeah, I don't think you'd want to eat one of those. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna say no. Apparently, it's a bean. Alrighty then. So let's see. Is uh, Sue gonna get the win here? Your dinner partner suddenly starts coughing and then says the food went down the wrong way. According to the University of Miami Medical School, what does he mean? He's trying to change the topic of conversation. Uh, it went down the trachea instead of the esophagus. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. All right, not doing so well with Hollywood Squares. All right, so the computer gets to go for the car. Hooray for them. You know what? I, I hope they chose the wrong key. Good. No car for you. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I don't think the questions stood up in this game. But then again, I didn't even know half of them. <laughs> oh, good gravy. All right. So that went a lot quicker than I thought. So I guess my one more is going to be definitely one more. Um, so this game is based on a kid's game show called Funhouse. Um, this one was, uh, I think it was on in like afternoons, hosted by a guy named J.D. Roth. And that's, uh, that's actually a pretty decent like video rendition of him. So, from what I know about this game, this game actually um, has nothing to do with, like, the game show. Other than you go into 
like a fun house and do like stunts and such. But uh, I have no idea what you actually are like supposed to do in this game. <laughs> Alright, so I guess you're just supposed to like collect coins and look for a key. Alright, this game seems really terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess so I'm like I'm tapping the A button to run and I don't know if I'm like throwing balls or like shooting things but uh, yeah this is a interesting game to say the least uh, sadly I've got to go for tonight loved your stream hey Carjo thank you for stopping in appreciate you hope to see you again in a future stream take care All right, yeah, I have no idea what is even going on here. Ooh, money. <laughs> Apparently I can collect money. Oh, you know what? I just see now that I'm on a timer. So I guess you have a certain amount of time to uh, finish the levels. But wow, that like... That, like, punted me halfway across the room. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to... I don't really don't know what to think about this game. Alright, so now I'm apparently shooting things in order. I guess this is easy enough. All right. <laughs> it's a meth thing to call it strem and not stream. <laughs> All right, so now I've got eight of these things to shoot. I wonder if I shoot the wrong one if you they make you start it over. That would be terrible. Alright, this game seems way too simplistic. <laughs> Alright, now they have, like, cannons shooting at me. I guess I could pick up some money along the way. I really have no idea what's even going on right now. Oh, there's a key out. <laughs> wow, and it's like it's like playing defense on me. Let's see. I was trying and failing to explain intentional misspellings of things on the internet for the fun of it to my mother today. That seems like a Herculean task, truth be told. Uh, do Smash TV. You know, you know what? Uh, we don't know games. I actually did Smash TV last Wednesday. So uh, if you wanna, if you wanna check that out, I uh, yeah, I did Super Smash TV on uh, my one-off Wednesday last when, uh, last week. But uh, Smash TV is definitely a fun game. I do enjoy that very much. But this game. I don't know what to think about this game right now. <laughs> it, just, it just seems like I'm running around like aimlessly. You know, just randomly like running into things <laughs> like like there's supposed to be obstacles of some sort. Ooh, I found a shortcut. <laughs> big money, big prizes. I love it. Yeah, Smash TV was definitely quite the game. Um, I played that, and I also played its um, its lesser known, um, not necessarily a sequel. I'd call it more of like 
maybe a brother or a sister game called Total Carnage. There's a weird game if you uh, have ever played that. Like, it had, it had the elements of Smash TV, but it was just off-the-wall ridiculous. Like, it was, like, based... It was, like, based upon, like, this, like, fake country that, it, like, hated America, and it was, like, going to war with it. So random. But, uh, yeah, if you, if you haven't played Total Carnage, there's a strange game for you to play. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I love the generic comments that, uh... That this uh, JD Roth lookalike is just making. It's like, yeah, you're doing great. Keep going. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, I can tell you for sure that uh, this has nothing to do with the game show Funhouse. <laughs> like, I don't remember kids, like, going around in random rooms on roller skates or roller blades trying to find keys and throwing balls <laughs> uh yeah definitely check out T total carnage if you can it's um i don't know if it's a rare game or not but uh i had never heard of it until um somebody had told uh somebody had told me about it but yeah it's uh it's a really off the wall game Oh, come on. There we go. You know, it's like, and there's, a, there's like no consequence for like hitting anything either. It's like these, these levels are just too simplistic to solve. All right. Well, I think that'll do it because I've, it, I've hit eight o'clock here on the West Coast. So uh, I think that's where I'm going to call it a day. I, uh, I definitely did not get to all of the games I wanted to today. There's, uh, there's definitely a handful more game show games that I could get to. So uh, I may have to do another stream. Uh, but uh, this was fun. I kind of I kind of liked uh, reminiscing about uh, some of my favorite game shows and uh, and sharing them with you all. Uh Oh, thank you for the follow, Miamala. I, if you, oh, wait, Meme Lala. There we go. Meme Lala, <laughs> if I'm saying that right. Please forgive me if I butcher your username. But appreciate the follow. Thank you, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate the support. All right, let's see if anybody I know is streaming. Oh, I know who's streaming, and I'm going to shame them yet again. We're going to go raid Dizzy. Apparently, she says she can multitask. But how are you going to be my mod and play Call of Duty? You need to pay attention to shooting guns. Shame on you. But anyway, we're going to go raid her. Show her some love. She's awesome. As for everybody else in the chat, uh, I will be back again on Friday afternoon, picking back up Arkham Horror Mother's Embrace. Uh, hopefully the scenario that I'm on is uh, not going to give me as much trouble as it did last week. Uh, but any, anyway, thank you for stopping by. Thank you to my mods. Thank you for everybody who chatted and participated in the games tonight. I will see you all later.